Now I know we saw ng serve a little bit in the last lesson. I'd like to take a little bit of time and go over that more. Let's open up our terminal and we have mg serve, which once we start it, it will create an inline bundle, a main bundle, polyfills, styles, and a vendor bundle. So vendor is usually most of the Angular packages. Main is our packages. Inline is for our webpack to do all of its bundling. Polyfills are so that a lot of these ES6 features we have are able to be used in older browsers and styles is there as well that works for serving our application but you can notice that it's actually a pretty big file eight megabytes for our vendor file when we are just in development mode so let's see how we can build this for production and start using it in production well the angular cli lets us do this very quickly we do ng build for production Now, when we build our application for production, you'll see that we only have four files. And the way this works is the vendor files are kind of bundled into our main files. So now main is our entire Angular application. And check this out. For production, it's running 236 kilobytes as opposed to that 8.4 megabytes plus the 16.6 .6 kilobytes. So production flag really helps to get this down to production level sizes. And instead of having a style.js file, and that's getting injected into our application for development, we get an actual CSS file that we can load. So very helpful to run ng-build for production. And exactly what does that do for us? Well, it, in our folder structure, creates a dist folder. And this is our application. So now we have an index.html file. And let's open this up. And it's minified right now. But let's see, our head... Body. Okay, so here's the body tag of our HTML. App root is where our entire Angular application will get injected into. And notice the bundle.css is loaded here and our three JavaScript files for inline, polyfills, and main. And that's the foundation of an Angular app in production. We have our script tag, our custom element, and our CSS file. So really, once we deploy this index.html file, that's how you deploy an Angular application. You just put this index.html file somewhere and route to it from a server. Now a little bit more on this. Let's open up package.json. Don't save that, package.json. You can see scripts here is ng runs ng, ng start, npm runs start, runs ng serve. So all of these npm commands are going to run the Angular CLI commands. And to show this off, let's bring this down a little bit and we'll clear it. So since we have these NPM scripts, you can do NPM build. Running NPM start will run ng serve. Running NPM run build will run ng build production. And let's see that NPM start. So you can use either. You can use the NPM commands if you're comfortable with those, or you can use the ng commands if you know those as well. And that's kind of the CLI's way of building for production using the scripts for development. And that's just something I want you to be aware of that the Angular CLI creates a dist folder for us and all of our files that are needed for production are stuck in there, are dropped in there. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little, okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports. And you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services. 
and Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really, an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator, and a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here, we're just adding a decorator here, so this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfills, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template, and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even going to need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are going to get output to. And we're going to say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack Dev Server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator, and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript, and I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these, this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? You can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use and here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click Save. Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, OK. Well, let's try a component. OK, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal. No errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this. TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component 
Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you want to use components? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is going to be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app. 